I'd seen a lot of people buying these weasels online, but I hadn't seen too many people building them. And I think I know why. Developed by Studebaker in 1942, the weasel was produced to be used in the snow-covered landscape of Norway by US Special Forces in an attempt to knock out strategic power plants. The mission never proceeded, but the development of the weasel meant the Allies now had a vehicle that was semi-amphibious that could cross just about any terrain. The M29 had two 510mm wide rubber band tracks. This allowed it to have a very low ground pressure. So much so there are instances where the vehicle could safely drive across a minefield without fear of detonating them. The Weasel was not only a cargo carrier, but was also used as a command center, a radio vehicle, in an ambulance role, as well as a signal line layer. Although the vehicle was amphibious to a point, it could only operate in reasonably calm water. The M29C was later developed by fitting buoyancy cells to the front and rear of the vehicle, which allowed it a little more scope. However, it was still not overly suitable for rough water or surf conditions. I'd seen a lot of reviews popping up giving this kit a gold star, so I won't put you through that again, but I will give you a quick overview. <laughs> yes, it's tiny. Yes, it has a load of wheels. Yes, it comes with a link and length setup track and probably would have been better with a rubber band setup. Yes, it comes with four schemes. Yes, it comes with generous photo etch and decals. And yes, the detail on the molding is of an extremely high standard. And yes, it comes with a driver figure who could probably use a bit of a pick me up. So there it is. That's what it looks like in the box. That's the good bit. Let's see how it builds up now and get a real overview of what this model is like. Just about any model can look amazing in the box, but it all comes down to the build. And that's where I'm going to go the extra mile here for you today. It should go without saying that the Weasel is a small vehicle, so it is to be expected that the kit will be full of small parts. But successful manufacturers manage to find that sweet spot between buildability and detail. Tacom usually gets this right from my experience, so I was truly hoping that that would be the case for this build. The assembly began with the brackets for the return rollers. The size of the parts required tweezers and some creative thinking to not end up with glue all over the place. Assembly won and the fun had already begun, but that was to be expected, right? The covers for the springs were attached to the hull section and required some cleaning up to ensure they sat flush. Once the return roller brackets had dried, they were attached to the hull and care is required because the brackets are slightly different on each side. The leaf springs are clipped from the sprues and the arduous task of scraping the mold seams off the middles of the mouldings begins. The parts are so small it makes handling quite tricky. Once they've been tidied up, they're fitted off to the hull. The cross spring requires an attachment bracket to the idler wheel arm and it is extremely fiddly to fit. I'd suggest you try attaching that piece to the arm prior to fitting it to the hull section if that is an option for you. The tiny wheels are cleaned up as best I could given how small they were. There is just nothing to grip onto. The eight wheels per assembly are glued together on the arm. And there is so much movement and play in the part. It is a constant battle to try and keep the wheels straight and parallel. I glued the wheels to one half of the arm and then went back through and attached the wheels to the other side in the hope that the glue would have tacked off and made handling a little easier. But that wasn't really the case. 
The drive sockets, returns and idlers are assembled now. The idlers have a couple of photo etch rings on the insides of the wheel hubs. Nice detail, but given they are so small, I'm questioning how necessary they are. Nonetheless, the rings were attached to the plastic using a touch of super glue. After some time, I was able to handle the wheel assemblies and try and sand any imperfections away. They were just so small and the plastic and glue was so soft, this was going to have to be a case of near enough was good enough. The wheel assemblies now have the arms attached to them. This is a two piece assembly and again is extremely fine. It was also here I noticed that the plastic didn't seem to like any of the glue I was using on it. I tried SMS, Mr. Hobby and Tamiya Extra Thin and each of the glues seemed to turn the plastic into chewing gum and not want to grab it how I was expecting. It was really quite odd. These arms are designed to clip onto the ends of the leaf springs, but every time I tried to get that to do that, the parts just broke. I ended up removing the small pins in the molding so it didn't clip on. It would have to slide on and be glued in place. I placed the model on a surface I knew was hard and flat so I could keep the wheels lying straight. Trying to keep the wheels flat and parallel was clearly an uphill battle. The stabilizing arms fit off to the hull and connect to the tops of the arms off the wheel assemblies. The instructions were questionable and I spent a long time trying to figure out exactly how these should sit. I appreciate it seems logical, however it didn't make sense because when the arm was in the position I felt was correct, Sometimes the wheels were on angles and not sitting flat with the ground. So as a result, the logical connection points just didn't align at times. The whole assembly was ugly, frustrating and overly time consuming. Ugly, ugly, ugly. <laughs> I knew the wheels and suspension sections were going to be where a great deal of the building would be, or at least I'd hoped that that was the case and I could now get moving through the build in a more efficient way. The last few Tacom kits I've built have included Lincoln length tracks and they have been perfect. So I had no reason to think this kit would be any different. How I usually make these tracks is to glue the top run of the track together and whilst the glue is still wet, manipulate the ends around the idler and the drive. That was the tactic I was taking with this build, however the issue with the glue not performing very well on the plastic seemed to be wreaking havoc with my process. The glue just wouldn't bite which was making this technique very difficult. I persevered with it and managed to set the top rail in place using super glue to hold it on the returns and idlers. I then moved on to the bottom length but unfortunately it became apparent that the tracks were about half a link too long. I was going to have to try and shorten the track. So the only way I could see this happening was to cut a link out of the underside and then patch in a piece. By doing it on the underside, I'm hoping I may be able to hide it better than elsewhere. A link was removed using a razor saw. The two halves of the tracks are then joined to their respective sides and a small piece of the track link is dropped into the cavity. One side was okay and sat flush, but the other had a significant upward lump in the middle of the track due to the wheels not sitting flush to the ground. And I don't know what else I could have done at this point. I don't know what else to do. What else am I supposed to do? I kind of hoped that the hard work may be behind me now and surely there'd be no more issues with this build. So I found new energy and I moved to the top side. Two side guards are connected to a frame system holding them all together. The driver controls and engine cover are a standalone assembly, but as you can see, there is no defined position for the parts to marry. So I joined them now how I felt was logical. 
A series of extremely small levers was attached to the part and so far so good. The part is then further enhanced with a small photo etch grab handle. The mid wall assembly notes a number of fine photo etch pieces, however I didn't attach them because it seemed pointless with the issues I was having with just basic fit and figured they wouldn't last long even if I managed to get them on. The radiator assembly was again a clumsy fit, so I was hoping that wouldn't cause issues down the track. But of course, trying to fit the radiator assembly to the hull was heading in the same direction as the rest of the model. Clumsy fit and location points was proving to be really unhelpful. I knew what I was supposed to do, it just didn't want to do it with the way the radiator was sitting. Was it something I was doing wrong? And now to the driver's controls and the mid wall, again, fit issues. I simply couldn't get the pre-assembled part to align with the placement points on that wall. So I had to break them apart and fudge it as best I could. Given my time again, I would use that wall as my positioning for those two pieces. I'm not saying that would actually work, but it might help shed some light on the positioning. I stuck the engine cover on that wall section and glued them in place and would try and fit the driver's controls after that. But as expected, it was all a bit of a mess. And if you look, you can see what I'm talking about, the glue not grabbing. If this hadn't have been a review kit, I think this probably would have been the last straw. I cleared my head and thought fixing the bed to the chassis might help the process, so I went about attaching it. It required some muscle to seat it in place, but I managed to get it to sit flat eventually. You may also notice I glued some weights in the hull in an attempt to settle the wheels and tracks and flatten everything out. It wasn't overly successful, however the weight did make handling the model a little better to work with. The driver's control sticks are a series of minuscule assemblies again with a piece of photo etch thrown in. They need to be fixed prior to fixing the seats in place. As pointed out at the start of the review, the moulding in the seats was quite nice and they were set in place. There is a buckle and strap attached to the rear seat pocket, but there is a bit of guesswork as to exactly how that should look. The seats are now fitted in place and the interior is starting to take shape. Onto the side walls and the kit comes with a series of etch collars that are designed to attach to the sides for the poles for the roof to sit in, at least that's what I assume they're for. I tried to bend these but it was futile without a proper rolling tool, so they would have to remain in the box. Then of course, you guessed it, the right hand wall wouldn't sit flush on the model and left a gaping hole where the engine cover sat. I kept trying to work out where I'd gone wrong, but I have no clue. I resigned myself to the fact I'd have to go hacking with a scalpel, so that's what I did. I managed to then get the walls to sit flush, but there was still a gap where the engine cover sat next to the wall. The left hand wall is now attached to the model, and luckily I didn't seem to have the fit issues that I had on the other side. The exhaust includes a mesh screen and a guard piece. The kit gives you a block to try and form the mesh, but I really can't see how anybody could get a decent result trying to use it. I bent mine with a photo etch bending tool, which made short work of the job. If you were working with photo etch, I strongly recommend investing in a bending tool. They come in very handy and give you a nice tight corner.
The screen is attached using super glue. The placement is logical, but the shapes on the pieces just don't seem to settle how I would have expected. However, I persevered with it and got a result. There is a small bent piece of etch, a heat guard I assume, which is included in this assembly, but be careful because the instructions make it look like it goes on the outside of the mesh, but is actually supposed to be on the inside. I dropped it in, but probably shouldn't have bothered. Moving to the top and I'm having more fit issues. It comes as a result of the poor positioning of the radiator walls and it's affecting the top and the front pieces. By shaving the locating pin from the top side, I was able to get around that and taking to the radiator wall with some sprue cutters allowed me to get the part to sit flush. Filling will still be required, obviously. The windscreen is supplied as a single clear part and is only posable in the upright position. Both front and rear faces of the piece are masked prior to attaching it to the model. Of course, when I go to test fit it, it just didn't want to fit. So a microfile and some further plastic surgery was required to wedge it in to get it to sit completely upright. I loaded the connecting points with super glue in the hope to hold it in place as a certain amount of coercion was required to have it sit correctly. The brackets were then glued in place using a touch of super glue. I'd been wanting to readdress the pole holders from the earlier steps. The etch supplied with the kit was just too awkward for me to use, so I substituted it with lead foil I had in the stash. The lead was so much softer and I was able to roll it using an airbrush needle. The small pieces were then fitted to the side walls with a touch of super glue. There were significant gaps around pretty much all of the joints around the model, so the first round of putty was applied using the tip of my finger as well as the tip of a spatula. Once dry, the putty is easily cleaned up using a cotton bud with IPA and it greatly reduces the sanding that's required. In saying that, I will need to revisit the filling in some of the areas after inspecting it once it was primed. And at the risk of validating every aircraft modeler out there and feeding into the myth that us armor modelers hide our mistakes with mud and stowage, that's exactly what I'm going to do. A small piece of green stuff putty was used to create a tarp and hide the gaping hole between the engine cover and the side wall. There are a few small details that would have to be included after the paint. However, I was at the point where the model could be primed and placed in the queue to be painted at some point. I've been building models for a long time, so I'd like to think my skill set would be reasonably well developed, but I really struggled with this model. It was pretty much a fight from start to finish, and it would have been very easy to just walk away on many occasions. I kept second guessing myself with construction issues and the inability of the glue to bite. It was just weird. The weasel is undeniably one of those overlooked subjects, so I applaud Tacom for venturing into this subject. Tacom's manufacturing processes seem to be in full stride, with the detail in the sculpting and the molding being at an extremely high level. But the tiny parts, confusing in places instructions and questionable fit just made the whole kit almost unbearable. I would imagine, depending on how this version sells, a version with the buoyancy cells may follow. It wouldn't be that big of a stretch for them to do it and would certainly make for an interesting subject. But for me, it may be a case of once bitten, twice shy, and I don't think I could put myself through that again. All I could think of when I was building this was imagine if this was your introduction to the hobby, it would seriously turn you off it for life. This is not a kit for the faint hearted. Just be mindful of what you are in for before you start and hopefully your experience may be better than mine. 
I'm sure I'll be able to cover the construction issues with weathering and stowage, but that's not the point. It's just not good enough for a modern day kit. But in saying that, now looking at the shapes and the overall look of the model, I can see myself using it in a small diorama or vignette. It's going to be another one of those socially distanced models though, good from about one and a half meters back. If I've added some value today, please smash that like button and subscribe. It's helping me a great deal. Also remember to comment below and connect with me on Facebook. Remember guys, this is the greatest hobby in the world. Share it with your family, share it with your friends, and let's be proud of what we do. I'll see you again soon. I got my own self hot telling that story. Pop, go to Weezer, got a Weezer say pop. <laughs>